Today on the bench, we're going to talk about a uh, PCB that is a main board for a, a Leco uh, gate controller, swing gate controller. And a lot of times people buy these gate controllers and uh, uh, it somehow fails, you know, over time. And usually it's just because of heat and humidity, uh, you know, uh, cold temperatures, hot temperatures, switching back and forth. A lot of times you'll get what we call cold solder joints or uh, the solder is breaking away from the actual diode or transistor or, or pins or whatever that's that it's being used or utilizing. Well, anyways, in this particular board, uh, the guy has a uh, gate controller that pops the gate um, locking mechanism that's on the swing gate that actually locks. And it's got a solenoid and he had some problems with that. It ended up being a solenoid issue. We fixed that. Uh, but now we're addressing a problem a, a year or two later that's uh, a simple problem. But this one is a flashing light that happens down the street so that people can see that the gate is opening or closing to get out of the way. Anyways, this lamp is right here on this circuit board. And we have a positive and negative, of course, right here. And it all sets into a, a plug-in that just pops into this. Anyways, this uh, was intermittent. He was having problems with the, the light going in and out and blinking, sometimes staying on. So he'd go out there and just tap on the control board, you know, inside of the casing. He'd just tap on that casing, and it would immediately fix the problem. So that tells me, you know, you have a loose connection somewhere or you've got a cold solder joint. So, you know, a lot of times with these boards from those extreme temperatures, you're gonna find that your uh, joints get a cold solder. And these ones both were cold solder on this one. I've gone ahead and repaired this board already, but I just wanted to shoot this video and tell you that, you know, a lot of times you a guy will get frustrated with these gate controllers and you'll go out and buy a whole brand new main board. It's unnecessary. A lot of times, those types of problems, unless you burn up the board, you know, and you smell a lot of smoke on it, and you open it up and there's a whole burned section, at that point you may want to replace it. Sometimes even then it can still be replaced. Some of the SMD technology can get damaged. You can, you can still replace that. If you've got a local repair shop that does have some soldering skills or somebody that can do it, they can go in and, you know, just re-solder down components if that's the case. In our case, of course, it was just cold solder. And I did replace like this uh, resistor here was a little bit burned up and a little bit browned. You know, I'm sure it's still functioning fine, but it gets hot in there. Uh, we went ahead and replaced that just to save a problem down the road. Uh, we always check the capacitors, make sure they're not domed out. You know, uh, I even pull them off the board and just test them. There's no sense in sending it back to them and having a problem a few months down the road. But this board is in really good shape, so there's no reason to update the board. It was going to cost him 139 or whatever it was, and this repair cost 45 to get it in here and just have us touch solder on here. So it's a simple, a simple process. But just going back to it, you know, sometimes you may have a relay that goes out and it's not triggering a gate to open or a mechanism to, to happen there. Uh, there's just a lot of those types of things that can happen. A uh, piezo buzzer can go out and it's not making the buzzing sounds that it needs to or the horn sound that you want coming from it. There's just a bunch of little tiny things like that that can happen that can cause you a problem. Another thing is if you're having problems programming it and it's not programming to your remotes and you're pushing the buttons here to program and it's just not doing it, a lot of times that can be an EEPROM. Your EEPROM could have gone out. That's an erasable program of memory chip and that chip can be burned out that's an easy replacement as well. A lot of times these little tiny uh, eight leg chips could be, you know, your, your IC issue that you're having if it's an EEPROM, that could be easily replaced. You can find those by the numbers on the back. Um, anyways, those are just some things I hope that will help somebody in the future. This board's gonna work fine. We're gonna send it back to him. He'll be able to get this up and running. Uh, that was the only problem he's having. The gate was opening fine. Just that light not flashing. And we know what that is. But anyways, I hope you uh, learned something a little bit about these boards or I could help somebody down the road. Have a wonderful day.